And today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. So I close in saying that I may have had a tough break, but I have an awful lot to live for. Baseball's greatest empire, Ed Barra. To have spent six years with that wonderful little fellow, Miller Huggins, then to have spent the next nine years with the outstanding leader, that smart student of psychology, the best manager in baseball today, Joe McCarthy. Sure, I'm lucky. When the New York Giants, a team that you'd give your right arm to beat and vice versa, sends you a gift, that's something. When everybody, down to the groundskeepers and those boys in white coats, remember you with trophies, that's something. When you have a wonderful mother-in-law who takes sides with you and squabbles against her own daughter, well, that's something. When you have a father and a mother who work all their lives so you can have an education and build your body, it's a blessing. When you have a wife who has been a tower of strength and shown more courage than you dreamed existed, that's the finest I know. So I close in saying that I may have had a tough break, but I have an awful lot to live for. Thank you very much. That was Luke Perry recorded, uh, and we thank Russ Jackson and Daniel Gleason back at our flagship station for recording uh, the speech that Lou Gehrig gave in 1939 when he retired as a New York Yankee and as one of the great players in the history of the game after being diagnosed with ALS. We'll have the pleasure of chatting with Luke during the fifth inning of today's ball game, his reasons for getting involved with Project ALS. They had some heavyweights around baseball today and tonight. William Baldwin, Matt Dillon, James Gandolfini, John Goodman, uh, Jason Priestley, Brooke Shields, Blair Underwood, all doing essentially the same thing that Luke Perry did here today, and uh, we'll have a chance to visit with him, talk about Project ALS and what they hope to accomplish down the road. They've never been able to find a cure for this terrible, terrible disease, and it's a tribute to Luke Perry and all the other people who have been involved in this particular uh, endeavor to try and raise awareness and try and raise more funds to uh, try and find uh, a cure for... The Reds lead the St. Louis Cardinals by two in the Central. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Fox Saturday Baseball Week 1. I'm Kenny Albert, joined by former Major League pitcher and current Reds television analyst Chris Welsh. And Chris, folks in Atlanta have gotten used to uh, looking up and seeing the Braves in first place in the standing. It's become the norm over the last decade, but not so here in Cincinnati. How have the Reds done it this year? I think they're surprising everybody but themselves. This ball club really believes that they've got a good club. Their starting pitching is somewhat iffy at this point, but they've got an outstanding bullpen, and the young bats have really come alive, and that's what has Cincinnati fans so fired up this year. And it's the last season in this ballpark for the Cincinnati Reds, and Chris, no visiting pitcher has won as many games here at Synergy Field as today's brave starter, Tom Glavin. Well, Tom Glavin has had a Cy Young year in his career here against the Reds. 23 and 9 overall, 15 and 4 here in Cincinnati at Synergy slash Riverfront Stadium, and it's been outstanding for him. He's a guy that feels comfortable on the mound. He gets good run support, and it's not like the Reds have been patsies over the last 10 years. They've had some good ball clubs that he has gone out and beaten. And his mound opponent this afternoon, what a story. Comeback player of the year in Major League Baseball over the first two months, 37 year old Jose Rijo. Yeah, five elbow operations. It has an elbow now that's held together with scar tissue and paper clips. Jose Rijo, an inspiration to everybody in Reds land, especially the other players on his team. They feel that if he can do it, they can do it too. Well, today's starting pitchers, both former World Series most valuable players, Lavin. Winning the award back in 1995 and Rio 12 years ago as a 25 year old in 19. Pitching and Tommy Glavin, as we mentioned last night, when Maddox is on, take the middle of the plate and just discard because they're never there. And the same thing basically holds true with Tommy, uh, same type pitcher. So we'll see. And Jose, of course, hasn't started since the 23rd of this month. Uh, a little uh, arm fatigue, I guess, and uh, he's pitched a, a third of an inning, and that was in Florida the other day. And uh, 
So back on the mound was a starter, and hopefully uh, they'll be successful. His last start was against the Marlins when he worked just three and two-thirds innings, allowing six hits against the Braves career-wise. Uh, Jose is seven and six. Tom Glavin, his last outing was a win over the Montreal Expos going on, uh, all the way in nine innings, allowing five hits. He struck out eight, did not walk anyone, and in fact, Tommy has two complete games, and they've been back-to-back. -back. Uh, Montreal and both of them against Montreal. One in Montreal, the other one in Atlanta. And overall, Lavin is 15-4 uh, career-wise against the Reds and owns a, a fairly decent earned run average. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, 159 isn't all bad. <laughs> 84 innings, he's just allowed 66 hits. Sir. Uh, strikeouts, so-so, 55 strikeouts. And, yeah, he's been a little while. He's already walked 21 in yeah. uh, 84 innings. So uh, we know what Tommy Glavin is on the mound. He's an excellent pitcher and a great competitor. And same thing for Jose. So hopefully we'll have a good one here this afternoon. As the Reds take the field, we should tell you the Reds made a player move before the game today. Juan Castro has been activated off the disabled list. He has been on it since the season began with a hamstring injury that he suffered in spring training. He has been deemed fit and ready to play again, and uh, unfortunately, the casualty of that addition to the 25-man roster is outfielder Brady Clark, who has been sent to AAA Louisville. Well, the thing about Brady, he's accepted it, and uh, I know it's not the first time it's happened to Brady, and uh, uh, you give the young man a lot of credit. He's He'll go down there and give them his all just as he did here. And uh, it's, uh, it's part of this game of baseball. And sometimes uh, uh, you don't like what happens, but uh, again, it's part of baseball. Jose Rio on the mound warming up with battery mate Corky Miller. Uh, Joe mentioned the, uh, the tired shoulder that uh, put Rio out of the rotation for one start is kind of interesting he under he do, undergoes such a, a physical regimen it's backbreaking for most other people it includes lifting weights and he's been asked to kind of back off from that just a little bit not the running because the legs are absolutely essential but they feel like jose can back off just a bit from lifting the weights that he does in between starts, and maybe that is something that has contributed to the position that he found himself in. I would think uh, certainly the way Jose goes about his workouts, uh, I would have to feel that would be a part of uh, the arm fatigue because I tell you, you know, we've witnessed a lot of guys that work, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone has ever been more uh, yeah. uh, honest with it than Jose Rio. We're set to go. Raphael for a call. We'll lead it off. Our first pitch is always brought to you by John Morrell's Convenient Cuisine. Just pop it in the microwave and it'll be ready by the bottom of the first. For a call batting 258, two homers, 15 RBIs. Riho working and for call taking a strike and this game is underway. For a call, Franco and Sheffield here in the top of the first inning. The Reds maintained their two-game lead over the Cardinals despite the loss last night. One ball, one strike, because the Cardinals were losing to Pittsburgh and rookie Josh Fogg. Final score, three to one, so the Reds still two up in the central. Swing and a foul out of play down the left side. And Rio ahead in the count against the multi-talented Rafael Furcal. One ball and two strikes. Sean Casey first, Todd Walker second, Aaron Boone third, Barry Larkin at short, the inner defense for the Reds. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. In left, Adam Dunn. In center, Juan Encarnacion. In right, Austin Kearns. He's back today. And Corky Miller catching. Rio with a punch out. And now he gets Julio Franco. One out deep. Don't forget, if you're out and about listening to our broadcast on your car or truck radio, by all means, buckle up and make sure everyone in your vehicle, young and old alike, does the same. Here's Franco, and the pitch is taken for a strike. The Reds have not yet proven that they can beat this Atlanta ball club with any degree of consistency. That pitch is taken high and inside. The two teams have played four times. The Braves have won three of them. And, of course, after Atlanta leaves town, the Reds have the Cardinals coming to town. They've beaten the Reds five of seven. There's a call strike on the inside, one and two.
One ball and two strikes. Rio getting ahead in the count here to the first couple of batters that he faces. And he deals, and that pitch, strike three call on the outside edge. Back-to-back punch outs. He goes to work on Gary Sheffield. Fans Western and Southern Financial Group wants to strike out cancer all season long. Every time a Reds pitcher strikes out an opposing batter, Western and Southern will make a donation to the Barrett Cancer Center. As Western and Southern says, when it comes to fighting cancer, we're all in this one together. A two up and two down as Sheffield steps in. How long from Mil Milford is our Nichols Bakery power pitcher entry today? There's ball one. If a Reds pitcher strikes out the side and Rio is two-thirds of the way home, that's three up and three down. How long of Milford will win $500 in merchandise from the Cincy Shops? The 1-0 to Sheffield. And a swing and a long belt, but foul to left as he hooks it into the seats. Deep down the left field line, and it caroms back out of the field where Austin Kearns will run it down, or rather Adam Dunn will run it down. One ball, one strike. Jose bringing it, and it's in the air and on the infield. Sean Casey calling and making the play, and the inning is over. And after a half inning, it's Atlanta nothing. And the, the afternoon at 12.30 on 700 WLW. Good old Chris Butt Sabo is back at Synergy for Pepsi Bobblehead Night on Friday, June 14th. The first 10,000 fans in the gates for the Reds Pirates game get a free Chris Sabo bobblehead doll. This unique recreation of the Red Spirited third baseman even depicts his Spud's goggles made famous during his Rookie of the Year season back in 1988. This commemorative Sabo bobblehead is only available at the ballpark thanks to Pepsi. Reds meet the Pirates at 7:10 Friday, June 14th. Get your tickets now for Pepsi Chris Sabo bobblehead night. leading off the bottom of the first inning against Tommy Glavin, 23-9 and nine lifetime against the Reds. 15 of those wins are here, the most by anybody. He delivers to Larkin, and Barry takes the first pitch strike. 15 for Glavin. Next after him, another former Atlanta pitcher, knuckleballer Phil Necro, had 14 wins in this ballpark. But Glavin with 15 and 23 wins overall against the Reds. Larkin pops it up. It'll be played by Castilla. No, he'll defer to for a call, and the shortstop has it one out. The so Larkin pops up. That'll bring up the center fielder Juan Encarnacion with one out. Here's how the Braves look on defense. At first, Julio Franco. At second, Keith Lockhart. At short, Rafael for a call. At third, Benny Castilla. Chipper Jones left. Andrew Jones center. In right field, Gary Sheffield and Javi Lopez behind the plate. Here's a high pop-up. It'll be played by Franco behind first base and moving to his right, gathers it into a way and we pause for identification on the Red Legs Radio Network. A look at the Doppler 12 weather forecast today. Partly cloudy, warm and muggy with scattered showers and thunderstorms. Tonight, warm and muggy with more scattered showers and thunderstorms below 64. Right now, it's 77 degrees at the home of the Reds. News Radio 700 WLW Cincinnati. John Casey in with two out. As part of its extra effort program, the Ohio Casualty Group donates $50 to Habitat for Humanity each time the Reds hit a double, and $100 each time they hit a triple. It's the extra effort program from the Ohio Casualty Group. Protect what's yours. Casey takes low a ball. The total for the season is standing at $5,150. Larkin has popped to short. Encarnacion has popped out to first. 1-0 pitch. Casey swings and grounds to second. And the pickup and the throw by Lockhart matches Rio's 1-2-3 inning. At the end of one, the Reds and the Braves are nothing nothing. Vinny Castilla hit off of Jose Rio. Al McCoy of the Dayton Daily News is with us. Uh, we mentioned the player move earlier. Castro is back finally, and Brady Clark becomes a casualty. Yeah, too bad, too. It really is. I, I, I really can't see that. Uh, it's one of the uh, cases where he's one with an option left. Uh, probably doesn't deserve to go back, but he has to go back because he's the guy that they can send back. That's what the game's all about exactly today, unfortunately. The, uh, if you don't keep your 25 best players, you play the option Yep, game. that's right. Swing and a miss by Chipper Jones. 
Yeah. Obviously, from a defensive standpoint, it provides backup support for Larkin at shortstop. But despite uh, Brady's uh, batting average, which was under 200, it certainly doesn't help the bench offensively. No, and even manager Bob Boone will tell you that. As far as a pinch hitter goes, you don't look at the numbers. Here's a line drive into center field. Chipper's on with a inning opening base hit. And you don't look at the numbers exclusively. It's the toughest toughest job in baseball is to be a pinch hitter and come off the bench and, and do a job. And uh, Brady did it last year, and, and you know he's going to do it this year if he gets an opportunity. Uh, and it's just a sad thing that uh, he has to go because, you know, the Reds were short of uh, extra infielders. Now they have it. They want Castro. is the kind of guy that's going to go up there and give you a big base hit when it's needed off the bench. Exactly. Here's Andrew Jones after Chipper's leadoff base hit, and the pitch is down and away for ball one. Last night, I think for the third straight time, Luis Pineda comes in there and gives up runs and hits. Uh, if any of these people down under, like Reedling or some of the others, Jose Silva, uh, are pitching to a point where this club feels like one or both are ready, uh, he's got to be all of a sudden in a shaky position here. I thought when I saw uh, Juan Castro here this morning, knowing something was up when you see him, here's a long drive, hit back into left center field. That ball's gone, a home run. Andrew Jones follows Chipper Jones' a single with a home run. His 13th of the season, and Atlanta, in inning two, jumps out in front here, two to nothing. Andrew Jones hitting a bomb off of Jose Rijo to put the Braves on the board. Yeah, when I saw Juan Castro here this morning, uh, and uh, knowing what uh, Luis had done the last uh, couple of times, two, three times out, I thought he might be the guy mm -hmm. that could send back and just go with 11 pitchers. But then you see what we're seeing from Jose today, and... Uh, he probably does need 12 pitchers, so that plays into it. But I do know that Jose Silva is very, very close. He's uh, pitching well down there the last few times. Wouldn't surprise me to see him up here soon. Swing and a miss by Benny Castilla following Andrew Jones' two-run home run. I know Bob Boone has said more than once, and I'm sure Jim Bowden has too, that all these things have a way of working themselves out, whether it be through an injury or... A player not performing up to standard, and uh, maybe in this case that 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 will turn out to be accurate. You no, know, that's generally the way it is. You know, it's always better to have uh, too much available talent than not enough, as we saw last year. But uh, yeah, it's going to have to. You know, injuries will play into it, and performance. Should pitch just misses for a ball, one and two on the 235 batting Castilla. And you got Seth Etherton who is uh, moving right along. You got John Reedling who is. Uh, who pitched well his last time after a few struggles, so he, they have a lot of options. Pitch is fouled out of play. Brian yeah. Bohannon was close to uh, uh, showing that he was ready to come up, and then he's run into a couple of stumbling blocks, yeah. where he's given it up a couple of times, so, uh, you know, you just don't know which way they might go. Two balls and two strikes. Jim Bowden said a couple of days ago, anybody expecting a block, blockbuster trade, it was not going to happen. You believe that? I, how? <laughs> I'm supposed to ask you the questions here. <laughs> All right. There's a swing and a I stand corrected. <laughs> There's an echo in here because that's exactly what I was going to ask you. We got an email from a fan last night after I made that statement on the air. He said, well, if Jim Bowden said it wasn't going to happen, you can take it to the bank. It will. <laughs> you think it will? Uh, you something. think it's a smoke screen he's throwing uh, up? Yes, I think something has to happen. I mean, as we've talked about before, there's a jam up in the outfield. People are not going to be happy when Junior comes back and starts playing every day uh, unless somebody gets hurt like we talked about before. Uh, there are going to be some unhappy people, and that's not good. No. And uh, I was talking to... Uh, Here's a ground ball to second. Castilla retired as Walker throws him out. Uh, Rick Williams, the son of Dick Williams, yeah. who's a scout for the Montreal Expos, is here today. And he's a major league scout. He's not an advanced scout. And uh, I'm doing a story for tomorrow's paper talking to scouts about if they think the Reds can hold on and still be there at the end of the year. With and, what, they, uh, have with right what they have right now. And uh, the first thing Rick Williams said is uh, they're going to have to add some pitching. And it's very interesting that he's, he's here, you know. Yes, it is. And, but don't you think that that generally is going to be the response that you get from scouts that you talk to pretty about much, this team? It's pretty much down the line every scout that i talk to uh they like what they see of the team on the field it's what we knew coming out of spring training yeah. 
the pitching is going to carry them as far as they're going to go. And so far, it's it's held up pretty well. But is it going to hold up in the long run? And that's what every scout I talk to, they're, they're waiting to see what happens with the starting pitching. 1-1 one, one pitch is fouled upstairs by Javi Lopez. The ball, two strikes. One out, two runs in with Keith Lockhart on deck. I guess the question that begs to be answered then is, when you consider the, the, the stretch they're in now with three with the Braves, three with the Cardinals, then they go to Anaheim, Anaheim which has right. been as much a surprise in the American League as the Reds have been here in the National. Ground ball third. Aaron Boone throws Lopez out for the second out. If you're Jim Bowden and his baseball people, and you can make a deal that's not going to financially upset the apple cart, right. then the timing becomes important. Do you wait until this ball club starts to lose uh, because their starting pitching is coming back to earth, or do you try to avoid that happening by making the timing? Uh, would, the timing is everything. A absolutely. Yeah, and they're in the stretch of nine games with three of the top teams, including the team they have to beat and the team they haven't established anything against. Uh, if you want to do it, and you can do it, I, I would say now is the time to do it because these next nine games, or well, eight now, they've already lost the first right. one, are very, very important to this team. If they can come out of this still in first place, they can make a run at it. If they get destroyed in these nine games, uh, they may not come back. One ball and one strike to count on Keith Lockhart. He bounces to Casey, who backs a step to play it, and underhands to Riho, and the inning is over. Good stuff, Hal. Thank you, Marty. All right, buddy. buddy. Take care. See you on uh, Tuesday night. Yes, sir. Hal McCoy, the Dayton Daily News, a two-run home run by Andrew Jones. And in the middle of the second inning, the Braves have drawn first blood and catch some great baseball here at Synergy. It's Thursday, June the 6th at Good Sam Hospital Senior Citizen Day. Pardon me? June 6th? June 6th. Here's uh, Adam Dunn. First pitch is in for a strike. Did I say May 6th? Check the copy out here. Now I'll be all over them people like, it certainly does. Yes, it does. I just read what they give me. Here's a rocket into right center field. That ball's going to be off the base of the wall. Dunn takes a turn. He's got to hurry up. The throw to second, and he's in there. He had to really avoid the tag by Raphael Percal, who reached back short of the second base bag. The ball got away from him, and Dunn is in with a double. I think Adam thought he had a ding-dong there where he left, the, uh, left home plate, and uh, he had to turn on the afterburners. And Thank goodness uh, Lockhart couldn't control the ball, or was it per call? But it was either it was, he made a sweeping tag at him, his first call, and the ball flips loose. So, uh, so a leadoff double by Dunn brings to the plate the struggling Austin Kearns, hitting 314, seven bombs and 23 runs batted in. Reds with a chance to get one of the runs back at least. Two-run home run by Andrew Jones to stay Glavin to an early lead as he delivers to Kearns. And here's a line drive and a right center field. That's a hit. That ball is going to be in the gap. It gets done home. Here's Kearns to second. Back-to-back -back doubles. Two-to-one ball game. Austin content to just go the other way and rip that ball up the alley to knock in his 24th run of the season. Oh, good, good hitting by Austin, as you mentioned, Marty, going out not trying to pull the ball. That's what Glavin will try to get you to do is pull that outside pitch, but went right with it. Bob Boone has said Austin Kearns gives him about as good a professional at bat of anybody on the ball club. Those two boys are I'm special. Gonna, I'm going to see if I can be their agent. You'd be real good at that job. <laughs> Here's a foul ball. You'd be real good. I'd make them Somebody more money give you a case of the goo and it'd be uh, sad. I'd make them more money than they could spend in the next two years. You got that right. <laughs> Aaron Boone trying to tie it up now after the doubles by Dunn and Kearns get the Reds to within one. Aaron batting 210, six homers, 24 driven in. The 0 1 pitch and he bunts but foul off the first baseline. Let me make one more point about that promo I read. You don't think I'm going to let this die, do you? Thank you. Jen Black, Molly Mott, and a cast of thousands. You know who we need now? Jake. It says Thursday, May 6th, and the SEG said, when they give it to you, you read it. You know what you said? Right. Oh, and to the count. 
Love to be able to get that runner to third base. And the pitch is high and tight for a ball. Drop us an email today. Our internet address, Marty and Joe at RedZoneRadio.com. We thank the folks at Broadwing Technology Solutions for providing us all that we need to provide you the service. They deliver complete IT outsourcing solutions. Believe it. And you can fax us at 513-621-BALL. Courtesy of Modern Office Methods. For all of your business needs, just call mom and work smarter. Foul ball back by Boone. It's a ball and two strikes. Glavin, the winningest left-hander in baseball over the past 13-plus years. 223 wins. Got a caller last night inquiring about Maddox and Glavin and how their contracts are up at the end of the year with the Braves and their ages. They are both 36 years old. Here's a pop-up on the infield, and Vinny Castilla will play it. That retires Boone, who fails to advance the runner, and the batter will be Todd Walker. Tommy Glavin turned 36 on March the 25th, and Greg Maddox turned 36 years old on April the 14th. And their contracts are up following this season. Two to one ball game here on the bottom of the second inning. And Todd Walker taking a first pitch strike on the outside. All right, congratulations to Emily Hutterman and all the youngsters who will take part in the Oak Hills High School graduation ceremonies at Cintas Center tonight. But a special congratulations to Emily, who's the daughter of our old pal Brian Hunterman. Big, big night in the Hunterman family. Graduation time. One ball and one strike. Seg, you remember when you graduated from Coleraine High School? I didn't ask you what year it was. That's not what I asked you. I asked you, did you remember it? Yeah. No, you don't. It's too long ago. Just tell him no the next time. <laughs> Here's a 1-1 pitch, and here's a butt. He drops it down too close to the plate. Javi Lopez goes out to get it, and the throw on to first base takes care of Walker as Kearns moves to third base. That's a good scoring decision right there. Let's see how they go with that. He was bunting for a base hit. No sacrifice. Credits it to Todd Walker. Turns at third base, and here's Corky Miller. Miller batting 323 with three home runs and 13 RBIs. He goes back to back in this series after Jason LaRue started all three of the series games in Florida. Pitch comes high for a ball. Checking scores of other games brought to you by Toshiba Business Solutions. Visit their business center near Gate 9 on the plaza level. Make copies, send a fax, and wrap up your business deal at the ballpark. All courtesy of Toshiba Business Solutions. After one on a Derek Jeter homer, Yankees won Boston nothing. Call strike. After one, no score. The White Sox and the Indians in Cleveland. There will be some late afternoon starts in the National League. Houston, Chicago, Colorado, San Francisco, Arizona, at Los Angeles. Randy Johnson got his ninth victory of the season against one loss last night as Arizona defeated the Dodgers 6-3. to three. Swing and a liner right at for call. That ends the inning. The Reds get a run on two hits. They leave a runner at third, and heading to the third, it's the Braves. Evan. No slouch as a hitter will be the first batter to face Jose Rijo. And with a play-by-play, -play, Joe Nuxel. Thank you, Marty. And Glavin will be followed by Froco and Franco. Tommy, a even 100 batting average. He's driven in a couple of runs. A two-to-one ball game. Each team with two base hits. The big hit of the game, of course, the two-run homer off the bat of Andrew Jones in the second inning with Chipper Jones on board. Reds, one run driven in by Austin Kearns after a double by Adam Dunn. Kearns doubled, but he did not move up a base. He was left, or moved to third on the bunt by Walker. Strike call to Glavin. Glavin, a left-handed batter, swings a bat pretty good. 
He swings and hits it hard on the bounce, backhanded by Boone, and Aaron up and throwing and almost takes Casey off the bag. So a good play by Aaron and a good play by Casey in saving him. Talking about saves, that uh, goalie for the Avalanche <laughs> got hammered last night, didn't he? I wouldn't know. Well, he didn't know. No, uh, I don't watch supposed it. to be an all-time great goalie. And they nailed him. The Red Wings got him for six goals. Hello. What's his name? Patrick. Patrick Waugh. Wow. Here's Furtall. He struck out in the first inning, leading off the game. Takes a strike. Rio back with the 0-1 and way high with a splitter. It evens 1-1. Two to one ball game. Braves lead it. Fourth, third inning. The line the pitch. Swung on and grounded up the middle and into center field of base hit. Over to retrieve it is Encarnacion and that's hit number three for Atlanta. And it brings Julio Franco to the plate. He was called out on strikes in the first inning. Franco, 250 batting average, a home run, five RBIs and four doubles. Sets and delivers, and he's down low with the fastball, 1-0. Reds wind up the month of May, 16 wins and 12 losses. The 1-0 swung on and grounded off the end of the bat along the first baseline, picked up by Rio, and he'll underhand it. Now on his way to third is first call and throw over there, not in time. Oh, uh, peddling around with a baseball, and Furcall heads up base running, and he winds up at third base. Uh, play goes one to three on Franco, and Furcall moves on to third. Jose looking at Franco as he stopped and backpedaled toward the plate, and then turned and just underhanded the ball to Casey, and Furcall seeing that took off for third and got there easily. The two away and Sheffield the batter. Harry popped out to Casey in the first. He takes high and away a ball. One ball, no strikes. Rio working from the stretch. And it swung on and hit deep to left field. And it's a four to one ball game. Line drive out of here off the bat of Sheffield is seventh of the year, and it gives him 21 RBIs, and it's now a four-to-one game. Sheffield is now arriving at home plate. Well, two pitches, and there's four runs, basically. Two run homer by Andrew Jones, and now Sheffield hits one out of here about a three iron. High changeup, it looked like, or splitter, and he jumped all over it. Here's Chipper Jones, and he pulls to Casey, and Sean will take it to the bag, and that's the inning. But two more runs on two more base hits. No, uh, there was no errors, no one left in the middle of the third. It's the Braves four, the Reds one. Every office has a computer network, and chances are yours could run smoother. Have you ever been upset you can't access critical data? Terror and a commencement speech to graduates at West Point, and Americans are leaving Pakistan and India by the hundreds. Details coming up after the game on News Radio 700 WLW Cincinnati. Reds trail 4-1, to one, and let's listen to our Skyline Chili guest PA announcer this afternoon, Jamie Horn, 10 years old, out of Westchester. The, the pitcher, Jose Rio! Yes, sir, Jose Rio! All right, Jamie, good job. Good job, Jamie. All right, let's get some runs. Rio takes low ball one. 
the Braves, a couple of two-run homers to provide their runs. Glavin delivers, Rio swings and bounces it right back to Glavin, who picks it off, and there's one away. A one down, and... Barry Larkin steps in. He let off the game. He popped out to fair call of short. Barry, a 230 batting average with three home runs and 14 RBIs. Eight doubles, a couple of triples. Lavin winds and delivers, and it's one on and foul. Back and over to the screen. Own one. Carnacion waiting on deck. Lavin delivers the 0-1, and Larkin takes the fastball high and away. 1-1. One one. Field shades Barry around to the right a bit. A lot of room down the left field line. And still way off the line at third. Swinging a little pop-up out behind third. But Furcall is there on the grass to make the play. And they're two away. Well, two down. Here's Encarnacion. He popped out to Franco to end the first inning. batting average, 11 home runs and 33 RBIs. Takes under the knees the ball. Lavin, the 1-0. And on the inside corner, call strike. 1-1. to this season, 469 starts for Tommy Glavin with 50 complete games. Swing and a fly ball to center. Andrew Jones waiting on it, and he has it. That's the inning. The Reds go in order for the second time, and after three, it's the Braves Jones to lead it off. He hit his 13th home run of the year in the second inning with Chipper Jones on base to put the Braves on the scoreboard. for Atlanta to go along with the four runs. Rio has struck out a couple, not walked anyone. And he delivers and Jones swings and fouls back and into the upper deck. Vinny Castillo on deck, followed by Javi Lopez. back with the 0-1. That's low and outside. A ball to strike. Miller hangs the sign and the pitch. That's up high and bouncing away from Corky. Two balls to strike. Two one. That's way outside. Breaking ball. Three and one to count. Um, next pitch a called strike and Jones throwing the bat away or what? He thought it was ball four. That pitch. Three and one. Swung on and hit hard into left field, but on the run is Adam Dunn to pick it off. Moving forward left center, he picks it off. Dunn does, and with one away, Benny Castillo, the batter, he grounded to Walker in the second inning. Bobby 
little pants on and that. Miller hangs the sign. And the pitch, a swing and a miss, a big cut by Castillo. Side one ball, one strike. Braves two in the second, two in the third. The lead at four to one. Reds getting a run in the second inning. Rio's next pitch is high. Two and one to count. Here's the two one. Swung on, straight away center field, drifting back is Encarnacion. He's there and hauls it in for out number two. Well, two down, that will bring Javi Lopez to the plate. Javi bounced to Boone the third in the second inning. and delivers and Lopez takes it in the dirt of all. Jose to the plate, swing and a miss on a breaking ball. One and one. Waiting on deck with two out. Rio, the 1-1. One, one. Swung on and lines right to Walker at second. He picks it off knee high and that's the inning. They go in order. The Braves here in the fourth. Middle of the fourth. Braves four. Casey Adam Dunn and Austin Kearns have faced Tommy Glavin. The Reds have had a couple of hits. They came in the second inning on back-to-back -back doubles by Dunn and Kearns to produce the one Cincinnati run. Casey leading it off, Sean into the first inning by grounding to Lockhart at second base. Lavin looking for his ninth win of the year. He's eight and two and a 159 earned run average coming into this afternoon's game. 84 innings, he allowed just 66 hits. Striking out 55 and walking 21. Casey settles into the batter's box and Glavin checks in with Lopez. And he winds and delivers and Sean looks at it low and away of all. Adam Dunn on deck. back with the 1-0 and that's taken outside 2-0 to count the 2-0 delivery Casey swings and it pulls it hard to backhanded by Franco he picks it up underhands to Clavin and there's one away so Franco knocks the ball down and picks it up barehanded and gets it to Clavin in plenty of time well, it's one away. Here's Adam Dunn, and Adam doubled off the wall in right field over Sheffield's head in the second inning and scored when Austin Kearns doubled. Austin's doubled the right center. Lavin to the plate, and he misses outside with a breaking pitch. Muggy day here in Cincinnati this afternoon. The 1 0. That's going away. Two balls, no strikes to Kirk Dunn. Yeah. Align the pitch. And ball three. Three balls, 
balls, no strikes to Dunn and the pitch. And that's a strike. Three and one. There's ball four outside. That's the first walk of the game. Dunn moves on to first base, and now Austin Curran steps in. Austin double the right center to score done in the second inning his 24th RBI and eighth double of the year Aaron Boone waiting on deck the pitch swing and a miss on a fastball and all in one stretch. He'll throw over the first and Dunn steps back. A 4-1 to one game. Braves lead it here in the fourth inning. Having the stretch. And the pitch and strike two call on the inside corner. No two count to Austin Kearns. Dunn at first base with one out. delivers and Justin will oh, make a strike three call and Kearns heads back to the dugout first strikeout for Glavin and with two away Aaron Boone the batter Aaron in the second inning popped out to Castilla third Glavin the stretch in the pitch and that swung on and a little chopper off the mound Glavin fielding and throwing and that's it the red strand a runner and after four Braves a four to one ball game as we move on to the fifth inning it's Keith Lockhart to lead it off and back for the action Marty Brenneman thank you Joe Reds trailing four to one we mentioned earlier today and you heard the uh, you heard Luke Perry give the farewell address from Luke Gehrig back on the 4th of July, 1939. It's being done in 14 big league ballparks all over the country today. Project ALS Day, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, the disease that killed Luke Gehrig. And uh, we are no closer to a cure now than we were then. But inroads are being made scientifically. And uh, one day, maybe we'll have a cure for this dreaded disease as Lockhart pops out to first baseman Sean Casey. Luke Perry is with us, a uh, generation of people. Remember him as Dylan McKay on Beverly Hills 90210. We're proud to say you're an Ohio native, and uh, we appreciate your taking your time to be with us today, not only on the field, but up here in the radio booth, to talk about this. Well, it's my pleasure. I mean, there is uh, no greater ball club than the Cincinnati Reds. I and mean, when they asked me to come here and talk about something as important as ALS and the way that it pertains to baseball, uh, I was happy to do it. We got a great day for a game here. A lot of people came out, and I'm hoping we got to talk to a lot of them about it. One ball and no strikes on Tommy Glavin as the Braves bat here in the top of the fifth inning, leading 4-1. to one. Ground ball back to Rio. He'll throw him out. Luke, your involvement in Project ALS, it's something that... Uh, project, uh, this project ALS and Major League Baseball have gotten in bed together to try and raise funds. Uh, any particular reason that you got involved in it? Well, for me, it's not so much about the raising of funds, it's about the raising of awareness. 
to let people know about the disease. I mean, uh, as many people are, are, are afflicted with uh, ALS as they are cystic fibrosis, and yet the government only gives about 10% of the research money that they give to other causes. And what's really important here is that these guys have found a mechanism, the four ladies in charge of this charity, where they raise lots of money quickly. It goes straight to the hands of the scientists. No government, no middleman. That's the way to get this thing whipped. That's the way to cure this disease. And these guys, really, they take the direct approach. So I'm more than happy to give them my time. The lady, Jennifer Estes, theater and film producer, she founded this in 1998. She herself has ALS, and it's been amazing. Uh, this lady, to coin a phrase, has a whole lot of juice because she's raised a lot of money in a relatively short period of time. And it's, what's not just important is how much she's raised, it's how much she's given away. Right. There are a lot of people that raise money out there, and some of it trickles down ultimately to the charity and some of it not. But uh, these guys, you know, they, they give away grants of quarter million, half a million, million dollars for research. If you go through the government, it takes you a year to get $50,000. And these ladies put hard money at the problem right away. And that's how we're going to beat this thing. Talking to Luke Perry, a native of Fredericktown, Ohio, who was here today as a part of Project ALS Day in this ballpark and 13 others all around Major League Baseball. Um, $9 million has been raised over the years since Jennifer founded this. And again, this money goes to scientific research to try and find a cure. It's really amazing with the scientific inroads that, that the medical uh, people have, have uh, undertaken and been successful in over all these many years that they really have not been able to find a cure. That's right. And, you know, we have a lot of information now that we didn't have when Lou Gehrig was stricken. And for him to be able to stand out there and say, in the light of all that, that he was the luckiest man on the face of the earth, that gives you, that's a testament to the character of that man. Rafael for a call with a two-out base hit as the inning continues here in the fifth inning. Julio Franco bats. Let's talk about uh, your, your, you know, they talk about your versatility. You've got more hats going on right now. You're wearing more caps and things that you've either already completed or things that you are about to undertake. Broadway, huh? Well, I, I just I did a stint on Broadway and uh, it hurt my knees a little bit, but uh, I had a good I had a good time with it. Um, I'm fixing to go do another movie here, but I've been trying to find you know take some time off to get my kids interested in baseball and do some fishing. You live on the West Coast? I do. I live in Los Angeles, which they don't have a lot of fishing, but they do have their share of baseball. Uh, occasionally, I'll catch a game out there, but nothing beats coming home to watch the Cincinnati Reds. Frederick Town, for those who don't know, uh, what, 30 miles or so from Columbus in the Mansfield area? That's right, between uh, Columbus and Mansfield. And uh, used to play ball with, uh, there was a kid named Tim Belcher, came out of a town not too far from us. Pitch right here. Pitch right here. And, and That's right. And uh, so there are a lot of good ball players come out of Ohio. Tim Belcher, uh, quite a pitcher in the big leagues, and of course pitched a couple of years with Cincinnati, I think ended his career with the California Angels. Uh, but, but a very... The day, the, the, the day that Tom Browning pitched a perfect game, Tim Belcher was his uh, mound opponent, and the Reds won that game over the Dodgers one to nothing. And I'll bet you Tim was happy to see it happen here in Ohio. Perfect game being thrown by somebody in Ohio, even though it wasn't him. Where did he went to school? Mount Vernon Nazarene? Uh, I believe Tim went to uh, Sparta High School, and I'm not sure where he played his college ball, but we were in high school at the same time. I remember my brother played against him. Back to the Project ALS, Luke. Uh, William Baldwin, Matt Dillon, James Gandolfini, John Goodman, Jesse Martin, uh, Luke Perry, Jason Priestley, Brooke Shields, Blair Underwood. All these folks doing the same thing, essentially, that you did today. Here's a hit and run, perfectly executed, as the ball was hit through the hole, vacated by Larkin. And for call goes to third, and on at first is Franco. First and third with two outs in the inning, and the batter will be Gary Sheffield with a two-run home run in the third inning. Is this an ongoing thing for you people? I mean, uh, you and all the rest of these celebrities are, are doing basically the same thing that you did here at Synergy Field today. But is this a one-time thing, or are you folks committed to helping this organization as much as you can? Well, I certainly can't speak for the other people involved, but I'm going to make a commitment right here and now that I'll be involved with them. I mean, I, I've been involved in other charity organizations before, and I'm always happy to help people out when I can. But these ladies have the recipe for getting it done. They get the money, and they get it in the hands of the people that do the work, and that's important. Here's a pitch to Sheffield. Foul ball coming back. Just missed our radio booth. Luke Perry was going to make a Hall of Fame grab on that ball, but it's back in the seats. You've got some fans yelling at you downstairs here. Well, they saw I can throw today when I threw up the first pitch. Now they're wondering if I can catch. You know, we told you before we came back on the air, Sheffield takes a ball 
that Joe and I sit up here and we judge guys that go out there and deliver that ceremonial first pitch and you pass with flying colors today. Well, thank you. The trick is always to pretend you got a runner on, take a real wind up, and uh, then you can get it down there. But these guys just go out there and try to loft the ball and they usually end up bouncing it and I wasn't about to do that. Oh, you did a good job there because that's the first deal. You got to get it to the plate. That's right. You got to get it to the plate. Two balls and one strike. Gary Sheffield, two on, two out. Here's another one to hit deep to left field, and that one's out of here. Gary Sheffield with two home runs today, and the Atlanta Braves have now jumped out in front of the Cincinnati Reds by a score of 7-1. to one. Not a good day for Jose Rio. Has given up three home runs, two by Sheffield, and the Reds are down by six. Luke, we'll let you go. We appreciate you again your time and then coming up here and informing the folks. And with the release that we have, we should let people know that they want additional information on Project ALS or to make a donation. They can call toll-free 800-600-0990. That's 800-600-0990. Congratulations, continued success, and we'll be checking you out on television. Thank you very much, Marty. It's a pleasure to get up here in the booth with you two finally. I've been listening to you for a long time. Thanks for having me. And everybody, be sure and call 1-800-600-0990. Be generous. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. Good to see you. Luke Perry, a gentleman who's devoted his time and his energies to make something happen with Project ALS on Project ALS Day around Major League Baseball. Three runs are in, a base hit by Chipper Jones and this fifth inning for the Atlanta Braves is still ongoing as Andrew Jones steps in and he of course hit a two-run bomb off of Rijo back in the second inning and now Corky Miller goes out to the mound to visit with Rijo and we'll pause for identification on the Reds Radio Network. A look at the Doppler 12 weather forecast today. Partly cloudy, warm and muggy with scattered showers and thunderstorms. Tonight, warm and muggy with more scattered showers and thunderstorms, a low 64. Right now, it's 77 degrees at the home of the Reds. News Radio 700 WLW Cincinnati. 7-1 ball game. Luis Pineda warming up in the Cincinnati bullpen as Andrew Jones steps in. Again, our thanks to Luke Perry, a down-to-earth nice guy. What would you expect from an Ohioan, Fredericktown, Ohio? And Gives him a chance to come back and uh, renew some old acquaintances and also strike a blow for an organization that obviously is trying to raise the funds necessary to combat a dreaded disease. Ground ball to shortstop. Larkin deep in the hole. Throws to second. Out. Good play by Barry. Good play by Walker to stay on the bag and get the force out on Chipper and end the inning. But in the middle of the fifth, the Braves seven. The Riverfront Poster Night is back. The Reds take out the Cardinals next Wednesday night. That's June the 5th, and the first 10,000 fans get a limited edition poster featuring nearly 70 Reds personalities. This 24 by 36 color poster includes Riverfront's most memorable stars, such as Rose, Pinella, O'Neill, Davis, Perez, Morgan, and more. If you missed it the first time, now's your chance to get this one-of-a-kind collector's item highlighting Riverfront's greatest. Get yours next Wednesday night, May, uh, June 5th. There it is again as the Reds battle the Cardinals at 7:10 for Faces of Riverfront poster night. Somebody must have been in bad shape when they wrote this copy. Here's Todd Walker leading off the bottom of the fifth inning. The Reds are down 7-1. to one. That's right. Which one of Cal's Angels is responsible for June 5th in one spot and May 5th in another one? Here's a pitch. Swung on and fouled. Nothing into the count on Walker, who tapped out or actually tried to bunt his way on a strange deal in the second inning with, at that time, the tying run at second and one out. He tries to bunt and did bunt, but got thrown out. We have probably seen all we're going to see of Jose Rijo. Pineda continues to throw in the bullpen. Here's a swing and a line drive into left, and that's a base hit. That'll bring up Corky Miller giving Luke Perry's projects that are upcoming. He will continue into next year as HBO's critically acclaimed series Oz, in which he portrays a fraudulent 
televangelist who becomes the newest member of the prison population, as well as Johnson County War, a movie of the week for the Hallmark Channel, in which he stars opposite Tom Berenger and Burt Reynolds. Here's a high fly into shallow right field, going out the second baseman Lockhart, and he makes the catch. And the throw to first, not in time. That ball popped out of his glove, and he snatched it out of thin air with his bare hand. So Miller's gone, and Wilton Guerrero will bat for Jose Rijo. Perry has also completed a spy thriller entitled The Enemy, in which he stars opposite Roger Moore. And he's also done a thriller, The Triangle, for TBS. A very busy man, Luke Perry, out of Fredericktown, Ohio, and we thank him for his time. Here's Wilton Guerrero with one out and one on, and the Reds down by six. Reds on Radio website up and running again for insight into our broadcast. Dial up RedsOnRadio.com, courtesy of Supernet. Supernet is Cincinnati's complete internet and network solutions provider. Visit Supernet today at SNOhio.net. In there for a call strike. Atlanta trying to make it back-to-back -back wins over the Reds. Here's the pitch, and it swung on and popped up. Franco will play it in foul ground just down beyond the coaching box, two out. Here comes Barry Larkin, who's popped the short twice today. Checking scores of other games brought to you by Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. After two and a half, the Yankees two, the Red Sox nothing. In the fifth inning, Chicago two, Cleveland nothing. Only other games going on in the major leagues at the moment. Foul ball. It'll be played over by the Reds' dugout. Franco makes a catch, and the inning is over. No runs to hit one left, and after five complete, the sad but true tale. Brave set. Oh, this will be his seventh appearance. He has worked eight innings, allowing a couple of hits. Struck out six and walked four. No records. Rio goes five innings, allows eight hits, seven runs. All of them earned. Struck out two, do not walk anyone. And, of course, three home runs, producing all seven of the runs. Two two-run homers and, of course, Sheffield's second home run of the game. A three-run shot. He has driven in five with the seven runs. Almost are as ready as Marty. Castillo will lead it off, followed by Lopez and then Lockhart. Almanzar pitched a perfect inning in last night's game. And his first pitch to Benny Castilla is in for a call strike. Now the 0-1 pitch. Swing, and he fouls it straight back. Putting the count at no balls and two strikes. Brian Bateman from Mainville wonders when we make tomato soup, do we use milk or water? Got too much time on your hands, Brian. Here's a bouncing ball back to the box. Fielded by Almanzar. He throws on to first. One out. Another person that might ask that question is Jake. One away in the inning. And Lopez, 0 for 2, will step in. Stop by United Dairy Farmers for your favorite hand-dipped ice cream cone or thick cold malt or shake. United Dairy Farmers, the dairy store that's at your convenience. That pitch is in for a strike. Nice to hear from Todd Birchfield. Lake Panasopsky, Florida. Lake Panasopki, Florida, who's an over-the-road truck driver who listens to our broadcast when he can. My good friend Richard Hogue is in the same profession, and he dials us up when he's on the road when he can. High fly ball hit into left center field, and that one will be caught by Encarnacion, two out. Keith Lockhart is hitless in his two times up. happened to former Reds prospect Tim Costo. We heard a lot about him when he was first acquired from the Indians organization, but then he seemed to fade away faster than Jared from Subway. He's continued to fade, Tim Costo has. 
He's probably faded so slimly that if he turned sideways and closed one eye, you'd think he was a needle and tried to thread him. That pitch is taken for a ball and the counts. One ball and one strike. Two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Swing, fly ball, left center field. And Encarnacion will defer to Adam Dunn, and they go out in order. After five and a half, it remains Atlanta sevens. Tommy Glavin working with a six-run lead. Goes into the bottom of the sixth inning, where he faces two, three, and four. Encarnacion, Casey, and Dunn. We want to extend our congratulations to uh, Elizabeth Benter. She's a wife of Red Security staff member David. Gave birth to a baby girl at 5.20 this morning. Young lady weighed in at eight pounds, three ounces, measured 20 inches long. Mom and daughter doing just fine and resting at Mercy Anderson Hospital. I understand that Dad David will be back to his post at the back door of the Reds Clubhouse come Wednesday night, and he'll be back armed with pictures. Congratulations to David and Elizabeth Benter. Encarnacion takes the strike. Floyd Barber, since both feel they have reached such celebrity, which promotion is most likely to happen first? John Champagne Walton or Dr. Tim Kremchak bobblehead night. One ball and one strike. The count on Encarnacion, who's popped up to first and flied out to center. Rob Butcher bobblehead night. That would be big. Or, yes, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Or Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Featuring Dr. Tim Kremchak. <laughs> Two balls in one strike. Here's the pitch. And that's in for a strike. For those of you who have been waiting with bated breath, and for whatever the reason, you have not been able to watch these matches. Here's a foul ball. In World Cup soccer today, Germany shut out Saudi Arabia 8-0. Ireland and Cameroon battled to a 1-1 deadlock. And last but certainly not least, Denmark 2, Uruguay 1. Not going to... Go, 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 go. Is that the way that guy did it? <laughs> Here's a 2-2 pitch, and it's low for ball three and a full count. The Germany, Saudi Arabia was an old-fashioned butt whipping. That guy probably said that in German. Saudi Arabia had only three shots on goal. Talk about a mammoth job. Here's a long drive to left, but foul on a 3-2 pitch. 7-1 to one ball game in favor of the Braves. They about hit the Reds 8-3, to three, and three of those eight hits have left the yard. Two by Gary Sheffield. Satisfy your appetite with a brand you can count on, JTM. Visit them on the web at jtmfoodgroup.com. Pitch. It's in the air. Pretty much routine all day long. Coming on right fielder Sheffield, and he makes the catch for out number one. Sean Casey's grounded out twice today, and he's up now with one out. Here's an email from Johnny Knight Street, who says, was it just me or did I hear Larry Herm shrieking like a little girl when Luke Perry was in the broadcast booth? Said, I'll bet you any amount of money that Herm's green flat him worse than when Carrot Top was up there a few years back. One ball and no strikes. Larry Herm shrieking like a little girl when Luke Perry was in the broadcast booth. <laughs> he was, now he didn't get out shrieked by Ashley. I'll tell you that. That pitch is taken for a ball. Shrieking like a little girl. I like that. Two balls and no strikes. Casey swinging and fouling. Preserve your special moments for years of enjoyment. Take all of your film to the Kroger Photo Center. Kroger, you can count on us. Reds have had only three hits all day. And 
doubles back to back off the bats of Duns and Kearns accounted for the Reds only run in the second inning Casey hits it in the air down the left field line moving over is Chipper Jones and it's out of play deep into the bottom of the six. Glavin back to the plate. Casey lines it into right. That's a hit. Down, moving toward the line is the right fielder Sheffield, and Casey will go into second base standing up with a double. So the Reds have had five hits. And three of them have been of the two base variety. Reds have had four hits, and three of them have been doubles, I should say. Here's Adam Dunn. He's doubled and scored and walked. This email from Craig in Dayton. I heard you and Hal talking trade for pitching if Rijo has one or two more bad outings where does he fit in on this club if we all if all the other pitchers are getting healthy i'd hate to see him put aside in a wrong way as it's been the case of some of our own in the past how's lance davis coming along if he doesn't come back and start it would be great to have another lefty in the pen uh, casey might have hurt himself just a bit and now greg lynn's going to go out to check him out the question concerning Rio is a good one and realistically, how long do you hang with a guy? And he, he was beat up pretty good today. Right now, Greg Lynn talking with Casey out at second base. Sean came out of that box running hard as he always does, rounded first and went into second base standing up with a two-base hit. And apparently he has satisfied Greg Lynn that he's all right. He'll remain in the game, and Adam Dunn will now step in. strike always good to hear from our good friend Michael Benden out in Colorado Springs saying that the kid that won the spelling bee is from Colorado Springs and lives not far from me I think he had an N when he learned to spell his name Pratyush Badiga that pitch is on the outside for a strike and then you're right about that Michael as good as he was and the fact that he reigns supreme today bottom line he is no jake here's the 0-2 pitch missing low and away for a ball seven runs eight hits for the braves one run four hits for the reds it has not been pretty here today by any stretch of the imagination. Done checking. Two balls and two strikes. Glavin retired in Carnacion. Fly ball right, but then Casey pulled a double into right field. And done with a count of two and two. As Glavin looks down to Javi Lopez, straightens up on the Synergy Field mound and lets it fly and misses with it ball three he is not going to walk too many people Joe mentioned at the top of the broadcast only 21 walks and 84 and two-thirds innings coming into the game today Dunn has already walked once and now the payoff to him he walked him again Dunn, of course, is second in the National League in bases on balls received. The two give him a total of 51. So he is 12 back right now of Barry Bonds and is seven in front of the guy in third place in walks, Sammy Sosa with 44. 
Austin Kearns has doubled in a run. He's also struck out looking. He represents the only punch out that Glavin has had today. So the Reds have two men on with one man out. Kearns trying to get him closer, and he swings and hits it foul to right. Strike one. Those of us in the media get a chance about this time every month to vote for player of the month, pitcher of the month, and rookie of the month. And Austin Kearns stands an awfully good chance of being rookie of the month in the National League for the one just completed, the month of May. Glavin stretches and steps off. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Inside corner, strike two call. Glavin has won at least 13 games in each of the past 11 seasons. He's been a 20-game winner five times, and he is well on his way to making it six. 232 lifetime wins, counting his eight victories this season. That's the ball inside, one and two. He's got a shot at 300, but he's going to have to go some, and I don't know, but that with the kind of career he's had, it's going to be necessary for Glavin to notch a 300-win career in order to make the Hall of Fame. He has such, has such a great career that maybe 300 victories, all he's got to do is get reasonably close, or I would think so. Ball two, two and two. As a reminder, all this season, AK Steel donates $200 to charity for every red stolen base. Again, this season, every red steals an AK Steel. $8,000. Total for the season, the Reds have stolen 40 bases. Casey at second, done at first, one out, two and two, the count on Kearns. Glavin throws, and it's foul back, and will fall just below our broadcast booth into the green. Kearns sitting on seven homers and 24 runs batted in. also rarely gives up a home run. He's allowed only five all season. Stretching the pitch. Swung on, fly ball, left center field. Crowd overreacting. It'll be caught short of the warning track by Chipper Jones, and there are two men out. Here's Aaron Boone, 0 for 2. Leo Mazzoni, the pitching coach, longtime pitching coach for the Atlanta Braves under Bobby Cox, heading out toward the mound, but this is just for a visit. No one throwing, at least at the moment, in the Atlanta bullpen. Boone has popped to third. He's also bounced back to the box, and he'll be at the plate when this meeting breaks up. agent draft begins on Tuesday of next week. Reds have been working out a, a number of youngsters the last few days, both at the high school level as well as at the collegiate level, those who have graduated from high school. it be interesting to see what they do with that pick that they get, which will be the third in the draft behind Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay. Here's a pitch. And the dirt, knocked down by Lopez, ball one. Gladden came into this game with a 159 earned run average. He's allowed the Reds only one run. Runners at first and second with two out. The left-hander kicks and deals. Call strike. 208 batting Boone with a 1-1 count. Tomorrow, in the final game of this series, the Reds send Elmer descends to the mound against left-hander Damian Moss. Descends 3-3 three three with a 278 ERA. Moss 2-1 with a 263 
earned run average, 115 game time. That's the ball, two and one. Off day on Monday, and then the Cardinals are in town Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Two 7-10 affairs, followed by a 12-35 business day special next Thursday. And then the Reds board a plane to head west and get into interleague play with three in Anaheim and three in Arlington, Texas. And a pop-up over by the Reds' dugout. Franco will run out of... No, he won't. He'll make the catch. He reaches over the railing and grabs it to retire Boone and end the threat. One hit, two left. Moving to the seventh. Seven... We're in the top of the seventh inning, 7-1 seven score, Atlanta. Carlos Almanzar back for his second inning of work and back with a play-by-play -play again. Here's Joe. Thank you, Marty. And Tommy Glavin, to lead it off, he is grounded to third and bounced to the mound. And his two times up. Almanzar retired the Braves in order in the sixth inning. Uh, he goes to work on Glavin. And the first pitch swung on and grounded in the hole into left field, a base hit. Reggie Taylor has gone to left field. Adam Dunn has moved to first base. First hit off Almazar in the ninth in the game for Atlanta. And Furcall steps in. FL is two for three, has scored twice. Both times base hits have been to center field. He scored in the third when Sheffield hit his first home run of the game, and then he scored, of course, in the fifth when Sheffield hit his second home run of the game. Five RBIs for Sheffield. Julio Franco waiting on deck. Almazar, the 0-1 to Furcall. And that's taken straight to Cole on the inside corner. Adam Dunn playing behind Glavin at first base. Ready with the 0-2. And Furcall swings and bounces a foul over to the Reds dugout. <laughs> An 0-2 count to Furcall. Almazar has his sign. He delivers, and that's high and outside. A ball, two strikes. the sign. Almost are to the belt and the pitch. That's up high, a fastball and count even two and two. Raves two in the second, two in the third, three in the fifth. Reds one run coming in the second inning. And there's ball three high and away. Well, full count now to Frickle after being in front, 0-2. Pay off on the way, and Frickle swings and misses. A pitch away, and he, of course, asked the plate umpire, Larry Poncino, is that a, is that a strike? Always amazes me. <laughs> Not quite. But a strikeout for Almazar. Almazar, and with one away. Well, now they're reporting that Casey left the game because of tightness in his hamstring. Right hamstring. Well, Franco, one for three, and a score to run. Almazar works, and Franco looks at a strike. 27,080, the attendance this afternoon. Last night was 38,771. The 0-1. Check swing and strike two call on the off-speed pitch. No walls, two strikes. One out with Glavin in first base. Almazar, the 0-2, and just missing inside. Pretty good-looking pitch. 
The ball, two strikes. Almost our sets. And the pitch swung on and foul. That went in the red seats off to the right. Two strikes to Franco. Sheffield on deck. And the pitch swung on. That's fouled back and just off the facing of the booth there at Synergy. New supply of baseballs for Poncino. And the one two. Swung on, grounded is short. Guerrero, Walker, done double play as Franco hustles down the line. Well, base hit, and in the middle of the seventh, it's the Braves seven, the Reds one. It's time for the and in the seventh inning, and they trail by six, of course. It'll be Tom Walker to lead it off. He owns one of the Four base hits the Reds have had off Tommy Glavin. Glavin has struck out one, has walked two. Two of the hits coming in the second when they produced the one run. Walker the base hit the fifth, and Casey a double in the sixth. The Reds had a couple on leading off the sixth inning, but that was it. Todd Walker leads it off. start of the year. He's completed his last two starts. And he goes to work and Walker swings and he has his second hit as he lines it in the left center. Andrew Jones over to cut it off. Hit number five for the Reds. Quirky Miller to the plate. Wilton Guerrero on deck. He's hitting in the ninth spot in the Reds batting order. Lavin the stretch and the pitch. And Miller swings and lines a foul into the seats down the left field line. Kevin Roboski throwing in the raised bullpen, right-hander. He pitched in last night's game. Walker at first base with a leadoff single. Lavin sets and delivers, and Miller grounds it right up the middle. As to first call, he steps on the bank, throws to. Franco on the double play. So Glavin reached for it. It went by him, but Furcall right at the bag at second picks it up and turns it into an easy double play. Well, quickly two away, and here's Guerrero. For the second time, he went to the plate as a pinch hitter in the fifth inning and popped out to first in foul territory. He pulls one foul outside the bag of third. Swings, rounds it right back to Glavin, and picks it off on to Franco, and that takes care of the Reds. They get a base hit. And that be totals the Braves seven runs, nine hits, no errors. The Reds are run five hits and no errors. It'll be Harry Sheffield leading it off as the Braves bat in the eighth. We're back to the action. Here's Marty. Thank you, Joe. Sheffield's had a pretty good day. Since flying, uh, popping up in the first inning, hit a two-run homer in the third, hit another home run with two on in the fifth inning. 
He now has eight homers and 24 runs batted in as he steps in to hit off of Carlos Almanzar for the first time. The Reds put the three infield shift on the left side to play Sheffield to pull. Almanzar came on in the sixth inning, has pitched two innings, a one-hit ball. He delivers to Sheffield, and it's ball one inside. Adam Dunn apparently having problems with his sunglasses, yelled over to Almanzar and then said, hey, it's okay, go ahead. Swung out and popped up on the infield. Todd Walker, Adam Dunn, Walker calling, and Dunn makes the catch as they come together about 15 feet, 18 feet away to the first base side of second base. Good thing Adam Dunn is that much taller than Todd Walker. That could have presented a real problem. Here's Chipper Jones, two singles and three times up. Guys looking for a way to keep cool this summer? Don't leave home without a packet of new cool contact refreshment towels from the folks at Old Spice. Yes, Absolutely. Strike is called keep your face, neck, and hands clean and fresh. Yes, sir. Thank you. They're perfect for your golf bag, your gym bag, your briefcase, or your pocket. Yes, sir. Cool Why contact not? refreshment towels from Old Spice. Line drive to Guerrero, two out. Look for them in the deodorant aisle. And if you don't see them, ask for them. Remember. Yes, sir. What is the message? Don't stink this summer. Right. Get your cool contact refreshment towels today. They're endorsed by Jake. Here's Andrew Jones with two out. Swing and a miss. Herms might have needed some of them when Luke Perry was in here. Shrieking like a little girl. <laughs> One strike and nothing on Andrew Jones. That's a ball down and away. Two balls, one ball, one strike. I like that word, shrieky. In the air, right center field, giving Chase Kearns. That ball is going to bounce once and go up against the wall, and Andrew will coast into second base with a double. He can add that to the two-run home run he hit earlier today, and now Benny Castilla steps in. He's 0 for 3. Bounce out second, fly ball center. Come back to the mound. Braves now with 10 hits. They out-hit the Reds last night, 13 to 4. They've out-hit them 13, uh, 10 to 5 today. Reds have been the beneficiary of about as good a back-to-back -back pitching performance as we've seen this season. First Maddox last night, and now Glavin today. Call strike. be interesting to see what these two guys try to get to re-up with the Atlanta Braves. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Albie Lopez, a right-hander, is now loosening up in the Atlanta bullpen. One ball, one st uh, no balls, two strikes with two outs in the inning. Carlos Almanzar looks back at second, delivers, and a ground ball hit toward the hole, backhanded by Guerrero, and the throw across is in time, and that ends the inning. We move to the bottom of the eighth. Atlanta leads Cincinnati 7. The pitch on the mound for the Braves. It's right-hander Albie Lopez making his eighth appearance. He has started three times for Atlanta. A win and three losses and a 429 earned run average. 21 innings has allowed 27 hits. He has struck out 12 and walked nine. And Darren Braggs takes over in right field for Gary Sheffield. Well, Tom Glavin worked seven innings this afternoon. He allowed five hits, one run. Struck out one and just walked a couple and stands to pick up his ninth win of the year. And Lopez taking over. He will face a pinch hitter and it's Juan Castro. Who will go to the plate for the first time this year, hitting for Almazar. And Lopez ready in his market. 
Time now to the big payoff inning, sponsored by your local Dodge dealers. Four listeners' names have been drawn at random, and the first four Reds batters this inning batting for those listeners. Castro about to step in for the first time this season. He'll be batting for Edith Hooper of Cincinnati. Castro taken off the disabled list prior to the game today, and... Brady Clark being sent to Louisville, and Castro steps in to lead off the bottom of the eighth, batting for Edith Hooper of Cincinnati. Lopez delivers high ball one. Kroger gift cards in denominations of $10, $25, and $75, along with two Reds tickets, are awarded for a single, double, and triple, respectively. Home run airfare on Delta Airlines anywhere in their domestic system, including Canada. This ball is fouled out of here. And a grand slam today, a brand new Dodge. Castro on the DL since the 29th of March with a strained left hamstring. He's had a tough road back because on April the 10th, while playing for Louisville at Durham on his first rehab assignment, and in his second plate appearance, left that game after aggravating the injury. He sends one towards center, picked off by Andrew Jones, one out. Carnacion batting for Phil Benning. From Ketchikan, Arkansas. Come on, it might be Alaska. AK, is that, is that Alaska? Ketchikan, Alaska. Come on, Philip Benning. You've been to Ketchikan, Alaska? Did you see Jake there? Encarnacion 0 for 3. And he fouls it off. Strike 1. Reds came home with great expectations after winning 4 of 6 on the road trip. Here's a liner up the middle. That's a base hit. So Phil Benning of Ketchikan, Alaska... Picks up a $10 Kroger gift card and a couple of Reds tickets. Philip, to claim your prize, you must call 1-800-843-2441 before this game ends. That number again is 1-800-843-2441. Now Reggie Taylor steps in, batting for Bob Oosley of Noblesville, Indiana. Ground ball to first. Franco will throw to the shortstop in the return throw, and that's a 3-6-3 double play, and that is the inning. Heading to the night, 7-1 Braves. Seven. Yes, indeed. Throw your hands in the air and wave them to the sounds of the village people. That's right. Do the YMCA at Synergy on Friday, June the 21st as the village people post-game concert. Reds take on the A's at 7-10, and the village people take the stage 30 minutes after the last out. Watch the two great ball clubs, hear six unique singers, and experience one wild night. The concert is free with a game ticket, so call 381 Reds today. Don't miss the Reds, the A's, and the Village People. Live at Synergy, Friday, June 21st. We're in the top of the ninth inning with the score 7-1 Atlanta. Jim Brower is taking over now. He faces Javier Lopez in the bottom third of the Atlanta batting order. Here's a pitch to Lopez and a swing and a foul. Got a big treat coming up for you in a minute. I mean, you think you've heard signature home run calls and whatever you think you've heard that is memorable? We're going to give it to you in a minute. You probably heard it if you're a World Cup fan. That pitch is taken down and away for a ball. One ball, one strike. Lopez is grounded out to third, lied hard to short, and most recently is fly to center. He bounces to Guerrero, who backs a step, and the throw on to first one out. Now, the World Cup is underway. This gentleman has become popular worldwide. He is the Ben Scully of Argentinian play-by-play -play soccer. Listen to this signature call.
that is the best. Honest to goodness, it doesn't get any better than that. Here's a grounder foul, a broken back ground ball outside third by Lockhart. I hope that rascal's got some endorsements down there in the pompous. It doesn't get any better than that. You talk about a call now. I mean, he is completely, completely out of his mind. They got a whole bunch of World Cup soccer play-by-play -play guys, but this gentleman is in a class by himself. 0-2 pitch, inside for a ball. Brower pitching for the second day in a row. He was roughed up in the ninth last night, giving up three hits and three runs and only an inning. Foul out of play. Of course, we always offer thanks to Russ Jackson, who just does an incredible job. He rarely misses a ball game. You can count on two hands a number of games he might miss over the course of a year when the Reds are in action doing all the things necessary to make it happen for us back at the studio. There's a swing and a miss. Lockhart is gone. We had Matt Buttleworth there. We had Daniel Gleason there. These guys are guys that get no recognition, but we know how important they are to the success of our broadcast. Here's Darren Bragg with two out. Today's broadcast brought to you in part by Pepsi Cola. Experience the joy of cola with Pepsi. In the dirt, dug out by Corky Miller, ball one. The Reds will have Adam Dunn and Austin Kearns and Aaron Boone to bat in the home half of the ninth inning. Swing and a foul. 27,080 turnout for today's Titanic struggle. 27,080. up in the pitch swing and a miss good change up full brag badly and it's a ball and two strikes pitch line foul the Anderson Redskins are playing as we speak up in Columbus playing Mount Vernon. The winner of that game goes to the Final Four in the state baseball tournament. Anderson defeated Dublin Sciota 11-3 yesterday at an eight-run inning. Jensen Lewis, the winning pitcher in that game. There's a pitch inside, two and two. batting an even 200. He's a guy that they played just about every day when Sheffield was out. There's ball three. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Burkall waiting on deck. And Brower in with a 3-2 delivery and it's fouled off and they'll do it again. the score. Braves lead it. They've hit three home runs today. Two by Gary Sheffield. Darren Bragg grounds to a charging Todd Walker who feels and throws to first and the inning is over and we go to the bottom of the ninth. Braves seven, Reds one. Pause one more time for identification on the Reds radio network. Doppler 12 forecast, partly cloudy, warm and muggy with showers and thunderstorms redeveloping this afternoon, a high of 84. Tonight, warm and muggy with scattered showers and thunderstorms, a low of 64. Right now, 82 at your official weather station, News Radio 700 WLW, Cincinnati. Adam Dunn steps in to hit off Albi Lopez as we start the ninth inning. Dunn has been on three straight times today with a double and two walks. We mentioned being second in the National League in 
walks received behind Barry Bonds. And not so surprising, he's also done his up among the league leaders in on-base percentage. In fact, he's third in the league going into play today. First pitch of strike. 460 is on base percentage, and that's going to go up. Barry Bonds, 554, number one. Jim Edmonds of the Cardinals, 464, number two. Call strike. And very quickly, Lopez gets ahead. No balls and two strikes. Broken bat pop-up that will be grabbed by the second baseman. Dunn retired for the first time, bringing up Austin Kearns. Checking scores of other games brought to you by Montgomery Inn. Enjoy the world's greatest ribs wherever you are. Montgomery Inn, 1-800-USA-RIBS. After five and a half, Red Sox two, Yankees two. In the seventh inning, Indians eight, White Sox three. And some games close to getting underway. Houston, Chicago in a half an hour. Colorado, San Francisco the same. And also Arizona, L.A. One ball and no strikes. A count on Austin Kearns, who's double struck out and flied out. He's knocked in the only Cincinnati run with following an Adam Dunn double, his own two base hit in the second inning. Ball inside. Look for Kahn's Big Red Smokies. They're mildly smoked and seasoned just right. Kahn's the official hot dog of the Cincinnati Reds. Kearns takes inside corner, call strike. I'll be Lopez, sights the side and pitches, and he misses with it low. Boone will follow Austin Kearns. The Reds two outs away from going down to another loss. And their strike called. And a 3-2 count. Now you just wonder with the way this homestand is beginning. And maybe it's premature. Maybe it's not. But as this stretch of games right now. Very well could be a defining part of the season for the Reds team. Their strike three call. Here's Aaron Boone. Bob Boone made the comment yesterday about the kind of quality pitching that the Reds are going to be seeing on this homestand and probably through the first three games of that interleague road trip that starts in Anaheim. This team has not performed well against clubs with records better than 500. Ball one. They lose today and they're going to be 10 and 14 against teams with winning records. 1-0 pitch in there for a call strike. Not a good day for Jose Rijo. And if it continues, it's going to force this organization to possibly make some type of decision about one of the more popular players ever to put on a Cincinnati uniform. Swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Albi Lopez breezing right now, trying to nail it down at the expense of Aaron Boone. And a line drive caught by Vinny Castilla to wrap it up. Final score as the Braves make it back-to-back -back wins here with one to go in the series. Atlanta 7, Cincinnati 1. We'll be back in a moment. 700 WLW. Satisfy your love